Hey, how's it going? And today we're going to explore opening and closing and locking a door in Unreal Editor for Fortnite. This is a really basic thing to know how to do, but it's really good to know. So we're going to start and I'm just going to create a blank project. I'll even call my project D and go create. I'm going to just delete one of these spawners because I don't like having two of them there. And then what we're going to do is I'll go to the top folder here and I'm going to search for a door. And I want to get a door that's already in a frame. I saw somebody joking the other day and said like, why would I get a door when I can get the house? <laughs> Something like that. Okay, so anyway, there is that and we're facing our players facing the direction of the door. And we're going to go ahead and launch the session. So what I want to do first is just explore the functionality of the door. So the door should recognize, it's programmed to recognize when a player character is close to it. As soon as it recognizes that, there must be a trigger around it that you can't see, but it recognizes that a player or some other device is near it, and then it pops up a message that says press E to open. So the door obviously has some sort of trigger device that it knows something is near it, and then it acts accordingly based on what that device is. If it's a player character, it knows, oh, E to open me. And it should be that when we come, we go through the door and we come back, we then have the option to close the door as well. So we should be able to open and close the door. And that's what I want to test, is test the functionality of the door and check its default state. The door itself doesn't appear to have any initial default settings. It just seems to be a door, but it is a door that can be opened and closed. But as far as those settings, that comes from another device, then that's what we're going to really be exploring today is the lock device. Because once we have that device, that has the ability to open and close the door and lock the door too. And that's what we could use in our games. We're in the game mode, so let's see what happens. I walk toward the door. It recognizes I'm there, E to open. The door opens. I go through. I went this way, E to close. E to open. It's funny, it opens both ways. You gotta be in proximity to it. It's aware of your proximity. E to close, that's kind of a weird way it did it. Yeah, so we've got a fully functioning door there. That's great. So now I'll hit escape and minimize and come back in here. So now we know that our door opens and closes. And we're gonna get, what we're gonna do now is get a lock device, search for a lock device, and it's right here. This device, as far as I can tell, just needs to be in proximity, needs to be close to the door in the same way that uh, the player character needs to be close to the door. So we're gonna turn it around and we're going to put it close to the door, like somewhere in this general vicinity here. And we can hide this, so we won't necessarily see it, but we can put it right, as a matter of fact, we should probably put it over on this side. Because then whether it's opened or closed, it's going to be close to it. So as far as I know, that's all we need to do is just put it in proximity to the door. And I would say that is in proximity to the door. And we can go ahead and save this. And we can go ahead and I believe we need in the game. Now once I brought this lock device on, I noticed that of course, we want to the game stop. I notice there's changes that need to be updated. So we're going to have to push those changes. But before we do, if we come on the door and look at its panel, it says initial door position. We can change this to open. And let's change it to unlocked. And let's just see. Let's save that. And then let's push the changes and see if our lock device is, in fact, interacting with our door. So it takes time for it to, initial state of the door was closed. When we go in, it should be open because that's what we told the lock device. So if our lock device is interacting with the door, then the door should be open when we go to play the game. And then we'll test it one more time and we'll lock the door and we'll see that the door, make sure that the door is locked. So this takes, I've been timing this and I want to say it takes about two to three minutes for the system to update anytime you make a change. So this does become a factor because it says eat up time each time it has to update a change or push a change like this. So while we're waiting for that, I guess I can go search for a button because we do want to get a button here. And I'll get a button because this is, we're going to use this control 
our button control to interact with the door. So we have our button. Okay, it looks like we're ready to go, so let me jump back in here. I'll go start game, and I can see the door's already open right on default, right on the beginning. Hit escape and minimize, we'll leave the game running. Now if I go back on the lock device here, I can select it in the scene or in the outliner. Let's change it to the default to closed and locked. And I'm sure we're going to have to end the game for that, but we'll save those changes and we'll end the game. And it's going to stop the game. And we, actually while we're waiting, we can just jump back in here. And I can go start the game. And if the lock is interacting with the door, well, I don't want this, press P to get rid of that. If the, if it's interacting, the door should say locked. And it says open. Oh, start game, uh, closed. Oh, it's locked, look. Red means locked. So it is locked. Okay, so that tells us that our lock is in fact now interacting with the door because it's locked and it's closed and there's nothing we can do. We can't open this or anything. Cannot do that now. <laughs> okay, so that's great. So now I'm going to just minimize. I'll leave the game running. So we know now that our lock is interacting with our device and all we had to do was put it in proximity to the door. Now let's say we want to control this lock mechanism with another device and we can use any device including a, a trigger box or a pop-up dialog box or even a button we're just going to use a button for now now remember this is the sending device and this is the receiving device so it's on the receiving device side that we need to implement the changes so if I click on the lock here and you can see right down here where it says user options functions so on interact the door is locked by default we have it set to lock by default we want to be able to unlock the door so I'm just going to select the button here and then it's going to be you only have one option with the button and that's on interact and we'll just save those changes I might have to push changes so let me end the game I can see this changing that's why probably because I brought the button into the scene and it's going to update. I think it updates everything and then I guess it has to reload to the server so that's why it takes so much time. But basically it should be that the door is locked. I'll try to open it but then I can come over here and press the button. So this is the basis for any kind of other game where the player has to accomplish a task or something has to happen before the next level or door will open. So this is what that button represents. It represents any device. It could be any device. We have it as a button, but it could be any device that sends a message saying, okay, you've accomplished the goal. Go ahead and open the door. And we do it again through this direct event binding, which I understand is going to be replacing the channel system of communication. So everything in the future in Fortnite is going to be using this way of communicating between devices and eventually I guess there won't be any more channel communication which is interesting so can I go in and see my change no it's still going here we go okay so now I can go start game and now if I try to go to the door it's locked and then just pretend this button is some other task or something that I need to do I come over here interact and did you see the button change to blue now it's open and then I can go through. And so this is just a very basic introduction into opening and locking a door using the lock device. I hope you found this helpful and if you find these videos helpful please consider subscribing. It really does help me and encourage me and I'm trying to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So anyway, take care, have a great day and I'll talk to you next time.